Do employers need to keep track of who's vaccinated and who's not? That is what they'll be doing in Santa Clara County, that's south of San Francisco. It's requiring businesses to keep a record of each employee's vaccination status. And the question many white collar workers want the answer to, can I just keep working from home? According to an online poll from Morning Consult, a third of remote workers say they're still not comfortable returning to the office. Two thirds say they would only be willing to return to an office when all of their coworkers, all of them, had been vaccinated. And just over half say they would consider quitting if their employer tried to bring them back before they felt safe. Clearly, there is some work to be done before things get back to normal. What do we need to do? What conversations do we need to have to get ready for that? After this pandemic, how should the place where you work work? Joining us now is Eric Mosley, an author, speaker, and the CEO of Work Human. Mr. Mosley, welcome to the program. Hello, Joshua. Great to be here. I asked on social media what folks were most concerned about in terms of returning to work. I'd love you to respond to Kara, who wrote this on Facebook. Kara writes, job security with flex time. Us latchkey generation Xers know how to multitask and get things done outside the hours of nine to five. If you want the best of us in a career, respect the other aspects of our lives that need balance against work. This was a good shakeup for employers to see the many different perspectives and needs your employees have and what drives them to their best self. Eric, what do you make of that? I think Cara has uh, summed up the feelings of many employees ver very well. And uh, this is what big employers are grappling with, how to create an environment that caters to the full human being of their employees. It's, it's quite incredible what happened over the last year. You know, everybody back in March last year went to their homes and didn't come out for, for many months. Well, productivity in most companies actually went up in those initial couple of months. But what happened after that was a decaying of culture in a lot of companies. So if you're the head of HR or the CEO of a big organization, you're grappling with the fact that the relationship infrastructure in your company has kind of dwindled. It's decayed. The culture of the company has decayed over this last year. Employees go on video conferencing meetings. They uh, do their work and then they get off. They never interact in an informal way with their colleagues anymore. And that's producing less and less of the of the kind of friendships and relationships that most cultures need to allow teams to do their best work. Well, what would you so say now in the future? Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. I was just going to ask along that line. What would you say is one thing that companies could do, particularly if they have now gotten used to working remotely, if they want to improve that collaborative culture? There are some things that you can't really it's hard to get those if you're not working in a physical space with other people and have those kind of chance serendipitous encounters. Well, that's it. Well, maybe you've got to create those chance uh, serendipitous uh, interactions. Maybe the office in the future has to draw people in. Maybe it has to be a place where social interaction happens. So it's primary role of housing work that's being done. Maybe that evolves where maybe its primary role is to get people together, to interact, to make sure that it can deepen their, their, their relationships. I think we're going to see a lot of volatility over the next six months as we start our re-entry uh, out of this uh, pandemic. Um, there'll be some turnover for a lot of companies. Uh, each company will evaluate what a hybrid world is going to be for them in the future, whether it's all working from home or half and half or all straight back into the office. But ultimately, they have to care for the humans that they employ. And those humans need flexibility. They need to understand that their whole selves are catered to. And then they need connection with their colleagues. It's the connection with the colleagues, which is the hardest thing to achieve. Uh, from a home office. Caring for the people that work for you has especially come up with regards to child care. A lot of people on Facebook mentioned child care. Mary said that it was a godsend in the job that she lost due to COVID-19. Mary writes, getting a paycheck is one part of the equation, but you must also consider the other costs like transportation, child care, clothing, meals, etc. Eric, I'm sure there are business people, particularly small business people who are like, I feel you on child care and other costs, but we're barely keeping the light on now as we recover as a company. How do you balance those needs? 
Well, you have to, again, look at each individual and see what their, what their needs are. Um, for every one person that talks about how fantastic their lives were working from home, there's another person who had maybe an intolerable working environment at home. Maybe they shared a, an apartment with other roommates and they all couldn't work together. Um, we've seen a lot of difficult circumstances for employees who are dying to get back to the office. Um, so, and then obviously childcare is an absolute huge uh, issue for obviously parents. So companies and company leaders have to look at it as how can we uh, cater to as many of our employees as possible, give them the flexibility that they need, draw them in to the office for some part of the week so that they can interact and build that culture. Uh, because it may seem great to, to just be on your own and working and emailing in your work if right. you're working in a not company but over time you become disassociated with your colleagues and then that leads you know loneliness um, mental health issues are absolutely through the roof uh, for so many workers who are stuck on their own they feel lonely and Eric before I have to let you go how do we make sure that these kinds of reimaginings of the workplace don't just apply to white collar workers but also blue-collar workers and service workers who literally kept the rest of us alive at the worst of this pandemic. Yeah. Before we go. Yeah, absolutely. You have to cater to every, everyone has the same core human needs, the need for connection, the need to be recognized. And so where, whatever their working circumstances are, make them connect with their colleagues and make sure they're recognized for the work that they do. Finally, the question that I know was on everybody's mind the minute you opened your mouth. Dublin, right? Yes, yes, from Dublin, although 15 years in Massachusetts. <laughs> Thought so. Eric Mosley, the CEO of WorkHuman. Thanks, Eric. We appreciate it.